So there has been a lot of concern about AI and what it could do to affect photographers and photography work, but new data has just recently come out that shows that things are likely to change very quickly and not necessarily in a bad way. In fact, a lot of this data shows that AI has probably peaked for a lot of reasons that I wanna talk about in this episode because it's going to have an effect on what we could expect out of Photoshop, out of Adobe for their generative fill AI, and also AI that's being put into other editing software as well. So I'm going to dig into that in this episode and also near the end that I'm gonna address something else about AI that's been coming out as a lot of common questions about people having certain issues while they're trying to use the Photoshop beta but also trying to do production workflow. So I'm gonna cover that also later on in this episode. But first, let's start with the data. It came out from Gartner Inc. And if you're not familiar with Gartner, they're a $5 billion company that helps other companies make big decisions based off of various trends. And it isn't just AI, there's a lot of stuff that they take a look at and it helps companies decide, should I invest in this? Should I not invest in that? Well, AI has been on Gartner's radar for a while and the data that they came out with in their most recent report is really quite telling. So Gartner issued a report in August 2023 and they confirmed with data to back it up that AI is being affected by what's known as the Dunning-Kruger effect and that's what we can see here in this graph, it basically means that starting out with something in the blue line here, we have perceived performance, what we think is really going on, but in reality, something else is going on and it's much lower in performance. A great example of this is for new photographers. After they get their camera, they're starting out here, and after they take some pictures, they think they're actually a lot better than what they are. We all have suffered from this, and eventually we decide, hey, maybe we're gonna start shooting weddings and real estate, but their actual performance is down here. So it's a much lower performance. And it isn't until there's a certain point in time where then you actually are performing as well as you think you are. Now technology also is affected by this. And it's done with this type of variation of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now Dunning-Kruger didn't use these terms, but this particular graph is what has become most popular in pop culture. And also people refer to this in a lot of presentations presentations where what we're doing initially is during that stage of overconfidence and in the case also of technology, very quickly things rise up to this what's called as the peak of Mount Stupid. And what you're doing is during this time you're climbing and you're climbing or a technology is climbing and climbing thinking that it's better than what it is or what you are with a skill. Well that eventually then leads to this valley of despair and that's where things drop and sometimes crash before correcting course into then a plateau of sustainability. So Gartner has a variation of that graph and they call it the hype cycle. And what happens is during this climb to the top of Mount Stupid, and you can see at the very top right now is generative AI at the very top right now in their August report. You can see though that during this, they call this stage the innovation trigger and then the peak of inflated expectations instead of the top of Mount Stupid. But basically these are the things that they see are innovative things that could lead to something else. But when they peak, what will happen in the future? Well, that valley of despair is what they call the trough of disillusionment. And that's where then reality starts setting in until they hit that slope of enlightenment. And then they also then put a lower plateau on productivity in that area of sustainability. So now that we've hit the top of the hype cycle, from what Gartner's perspective is, you could call it the top of Mount Stupid, we're about ready to fall into that trough of disillusionment or the valley of despair. And the reasons being is for a few different things. One, everybody is saying that they have AI, and this is according to Gartner's report, is that they feel that there's been a hype because we've got AI, we've got AI, we've implemented chat GPT, or we're gonna do some new generative fill. Well, if you've ever used any of these like search features that uh, Google was putting into BARD or Bing was using, 
it doesn't really help you any more than what their existing products did. Soundstripe was a great example. I use that for a lot of my music for my real estate videos. And they have a new AI search that gives me worse results than if I just use their standard check boxes and whatnot to select genres and characteristics of music that I'm looking for. So a lot of that has led to the hype, but there's a lot more too that has hyped it into a position where it could have a rapid fall into that valley of despair. So we can see this disillusionment now as traffic slows into ChatGPT and other generative AI apps. There's also lawsuits that are being filed against AI companies. Copyright laws are being refined that could restrict generative AI systems from what they produce. And on top of that, there's also regulation, and so far it's been the Wild West, but that is quickly changing, not just in the US, but also across the EU with regulations that are coming out. So when you take a look at laws that are gonna soon be enacted, you've got lawsuits that are underway, AI is starting to just not have that fresh smell anymore. And when it comes to investing in something, sure, a technology can be done, sure, generative AI can be made, but does a company want to put their liability into making products like this? Does Adobe want to continue doing generative AI fill if that means that they could start facing lawsuits and that they have to abide by different laws that could vary by country also? This is where that trough of disillusionment, that valley of despair hits where it's like things are going to change. We've already hit the top of the Gartner hype cycle. We're at the peak of Mount Stupid. And that's where all this AI has led us. Now, I love AI. I think that it has a great benefit. So you know I've done videos on using like the remove tool and shown that generative AI could have its place, but it is affecting things in a negative way throughout the industry. And those things are basically making it lose its luster. So if you've been concerned about AI taking your job as a photographer, well, things are changing. They always do. There's always new tools that come out that make your job easier. But to be completely replaced, well, as I've talked before in other videos, if you're doing stuff that requires realism, then you can't be doing generative AI fill for those things anyways. So there has to be this balance between tools and reality, but also now what's going to be available because of what companies may feel that they could invest in for their best benefit and also regulations that'll be coming down and then companies afraid of, am I going to be sued too for something like like this. And this is also why, for instance, Adobe has been slow to move out generative AI fill. As you know, that's based off of Firefly, and they have then their own stock images that they're using to learn. So it probably will be limited to some degree, especially if people stop putting more images up into Adobe stock, which is then feeding the AI learning. So Without a lot more input, if people back off from this, companies back off from this, the investment that Photoshop has made so far into generative AI has probably hit the peak of its hype cycle, and what we're seeing as the benefits now might not get any better over time. That means that other companies may be able to excel based off of what they feed their AI engines. Well, in the meantime, though, there is the Photoshop beta uh, that has the generative fill in it. And I wanted to touch on that real quick because a lot of people are writing emails to me and having problems with this new uh, workflow that they're trying to use with these new beta versions. First off, if you are using any beta version of any software, do not put that on a production machine because you can't expect it to work properly. So when you're doing pro work, like I do real estate full time, you know that from my channel here, that you really can't uh, be trusting a beta to your pro workflow. So never put it on a production machine. For those who have and mistakenly put it on there, think that you could still use it and you wanna go back to the workflow, then you probably wanna back up to the latest official release. Now, as of making this video, that official release of Photoshop was version 24.7. But even after rolling back, you may still have problems, for instance, trying to then open as layers from Lightroom Classic into Photoshop and other features like that that may be missing. The problem likely is in those circumstances is that by installing Photoshop beta, you corrupted your Photoshop preferences file and that's just screwing up the whole Adobe ecosystem. So one fix for that is you can go into Photoshop 
And if you go under preferences, then under your preferences, there is a reset preferences on quit. If you select this, you select okay, and then you quit, well, you are gonna wipe out all your preferences, but if you took the risk of installing a beta, that's kind of what you get. The only other option is you may have to do a completely clean install of Photoshop and remove everything and then reinstall it. So once again, if you do want to play around with any of the beta stuff, don't do it on your production machines. You can't expect it to work right. That also goes for any plugins, third-party plugins that you may have purchased. They are not guaranteed to work with any beta versions of software. So that goes for beta versions of Photoshop and any software overall, generative fill doesn't matter. But when we take a look back at AI though, and what's happening right now with it hitting the Gartner hype cycle and at the very peak of Mount Stupid, I think there's actually only good news that lies ahead. One, all this hype is finally gonna go away of AI, generative fill, woohoo! As you know, I have yet to do a tutorial on using generative fill. I've talked about using Adobe Firefly, but never in the beta. And once again, it's not available for official release. As I've talked about in other videos, we really don't know if we're gonna be able to use this to what level in commercial use to do it for pro work. But things do change over time, and this is really going to be unfolding over the next year or two. So as things develop, as they unfold, I'm going to be keeping an eye on them, and I'll keep you posted.